Hello friends and welcome to project three of three in my collaboration series with Shaper Origin. This time we're making a table. Now I'm excited to teach you how to make a table because if there's one object that every early woodworker wants to make, it's a table. It's a dining table specifically, but a dining table is just a big version of this little table. Now, with any table, with any project, there are of course three components that I'm gonna teach you. So the three components for this project are number one, panel glue ups for something like a tabletop. Number two, how to do mortise and tenons on tool with the Shaper Origin, no CAD involved whatsoever. And number three, how to shape table legs. Because let's be honest, Nobody wants just a big rectangle coming down to the ground. They want it to have some shape to it. They want it to have some lightness and airiness to it. So I'm gonna show you a few different techniques on how to do just that. Now, as always, let's get to it. Now, I am not going to walk you through the milling process a third time. Here's what I'll say, here's what you need to know. The legs are milled to two inches square. 24 inches long, and all other components are milled to 7 eighths of an inch thick. You can get the dimensions on the file that I will provide for you. Just make sure, as always, everything is straight and square because all of your joinery on the origin is going to be referenced off of those edges. Now the first thing we're going to do is a panel glue up for our top. No matter how large or small your tabletop is, do pay attention to the grain orientation. Again, because this is the thing that folks are going to see when they look at your table. So this tabletop is 18 by 18. So what I've done is I've split this into three six inch wide boards and that will give me some uniformity without doing something like a book match or doing something from a single slab, which is what I do in the more advanced table. So you can still get a pretty decent looking tabletop out of here and doing large panel glue ups. If you're doing something like a dining table, this is an excellent practice for that. So get in the habit of visualizing how the top of the table is going to look and how those grains are all going to play together. Now, how many clamps you need in order to clamp a tabletop like this is entirely subjective. All you need to make sure for large panel glue ups is that you're getting a good bead of squeeze out along the entire length of all of the butt seams. You don't need to incorporate biscuits or dominoes or anything like that. You can for alignment purposes if you like, but they're not adding any strength to the joint. Just a good tight butt seam and some glue in there is going to do you just fine. So now we dive into the main component of the table, the mortise and tenon. Now you may have cut mortise and tenons in the past in some of the joinery, say for the cabinet, I've provided the SVGs for you. This time, I'm not gonna do that. The entire learning component of this project is you doing the joinery on tool without my help. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna lay out my grid and then I'm gonna make my shape. Now I know the size of my mortise and the size of my tenon because I wrote down on my notes exactly what they are. Three quarter shoulder up top, one quarter shoulder down below, two and a half inches long. So I can punch all of that information in there. I know my mortise is three eighths of an inch wide. And then I can make it two and a half inches long. I always get width and height mixed up for some reason. My brain always does that backwards. But once I have it locked in, I can go ahead and punch in my radius, which is one eighth of an inch. Again, because I'm using a quarter inch diameter bit. And then I can place it appropriately, which is three quarters of an inch in from the end and quarter inch in from the face. Place it and then I can go get ready to cut. Now, this is a rather deep tenon. These are about an inch and a quarter. You can shorten them up to one inch, that's totally fine. Uh, you're not gonna lose that much strength on there. But then, 
you just need to mess around with the best way to relieve the shoulder. What I did was I created a pocket and then I did a loop around the perimeter and that gave me all of the material I needed and everything looks excellent on my Poplar prototype. So now it's time to go cut all of my pieces in ash, which is what my final project is gonna be made out of. Same process, make sure you take your time and get accurate joinery. Then I'm going to get prepped to cut all of my mortises and just by switching out for the horizontal work surface, but I'm still gonna use the clamps to keep it clamped in place. And then I'm just gonna make the exact same shape I just did and place it in the appropriate location, three quarters of an inch down, three eighths of an inch up so that I have a slight shoulder on the inside of my leg. And then I'm gonna cut my, my mortises. Super simple process, just the same as cutting the tenons, a little bit easier than cutting the tenons, in fact, because I don't have to cut the shoulders. And now, once I cut all four mortises on one side of the leg, I'm simply going to switch over to the opposite side so I can cut the other interior corners. I go ahead and I make another cut. Same exact process, just the opposite side of the leg. And then I give it a test fit and make sure everything lines up. Boom, beautiful. So now I've got all of my joinery already done for this table, it's that fast. And then I personally like to go relieve the bottom corners of my tenons. That's just a personal preference to make sure nothing gets bogged down when I'm gluing up. And then it's time to cut a taper on the leg. Now, there's a bunch of different ways you can cut a taper. You can make a routing template with the shaper origin, or if you have a tapering sled like this, you can simply just cut a taper pretty quickly, get all eight tapers done. There's a taper on both sides of the interior of the leg. So I'll cut all four of the one side, then I'll switch it and I'll adjust the jig and I'll cut the other taper. And it's time for a final sand. I mean, this project moves, man. It's a very simple little build, trying to wrap your mind around the joinery specifically. And here's a quick little tip for you. When you're sanding smaller parts like these legs, you can go ahead and gang them up and sand two at a time to give you a wider work surface to make sure you're not rounding anything over. Then it's time to just treat the corners, break the heiress with a hand plane. You can do so with a sanding block as well, depending on your comfort level with hand tools and or your shop arrangement. And now the glue up is something I do want to talk about because gluing up a table like this is generally done in two stages. So what I'm doing is I'm gluing up an A-frame, meaning two legs and one apron. I'm going to glue up two of those individually. So I'm going to glue this one up, throw it in clamps, a little bit of glue on the mortise, a little bit of glue on the tenon, put it in the clamps, set that aside, glue up the second one, set that aside, let them rest for an hour two hours, then I'll take those out of clamps, and now I can do a much easier glue up because I have two whole components that I can glue together. This just simplifies things. Gluing things up in stages when you can is the easiest practice when you're working by yourself. Throw some clamps on this bad boy, let it rest for a few hours, and it's gonna be good to go. Now I do always check for square by checking the diagonals, making sure they're at least within an eighth of an inch, within a sixteenth at best. That way I know I'm not gluing up a parallelogram, I'm gluing up a square. And now once everything is out of clamps and sanded up and cleaned up, it's time to attach the top. So what I'm using to attach the top in this case is a figure eight clip 
which is something that you can purchase on the internet at your big box stores. It's just a little piece of stamped steel that allows wood to move and breathe, and it's a really easy installation for a table like this. You just drill a hole, pop in some screws, and then you can screw your tabletop to your apron with ease. Something that's highly recommended for a learning project like this. And time to throw on a coat of finish. Same finish as all the other projects, just a wipe on, wipe off. Again, you can experiment with finishes. You can play with different ideas. You can see what you like best, whether it's a, a wipe on, a spray on, a oil-based, a water-based, whatever makes you happy. That's the whole point of these learning projects is just do things that you enjoy. Now, I don't know if I've ever experienced a faster way to lay out and cut mortise and tenons to create a side table than with the Shaper Origin. That is money. Now, side table number one is done. I do want to show you a few of the techniques that I use to create the more advanced table. The joinery specifically is quite complex, so I'm going to walk you through that, and then a different technique for shaping the legs. So, let's get back into it. So the first thing to discuss is how to make the tenon on this double split tenon joint. Uh, I started off with the table saw with a drag cut to make the cheeks. And make sure you get yourself a nice pair of calipers for this one. If you're going to attempt this joint, these things have to be absolutely perfect. A nice pair of digital calipers is really going to be helpful. Then I'm going to create both the top and bottom shoulders, again using the drag cut quarter inch on the bottom, three quarters of an inch on the top, just like the other mortise and tenons that we did before. And then I'm just gonna split it exactly in the middle with a tenoning jig and a table saw blade. That wedge is one eighth of an inch, so a standard table saw blade is going to be perfect. Then I'm gonna go to the bench and round over my tenons using a rasp, a file perchance, maybe some blade work, whether that's a chisel or a plane, and then using a strip of sandpaper like this, I found to be really, really helpful in order to get those interior cuts. But now comes the complicated part, this mortise. So you see this jig that I made, I'm not gonna go over how to make the jig. It's very simply 245s, that's gonna allow me to hold that leg on peak. So that took, probably about a half a day to make. But once it's made, that's really, really key that you make that accurately. And I'm gonna start to cut the mortises on either side of the arras. So the exterior part of the joint is what I'm gonna cut first. I'm going to cut both of these all the way down in quarter inch increments, all the way down to one and a half inches, which is really deep but you can get there if you go slow. Once I have these cut and everything looks good and clean, and they do, I'm gonna flip it over 180 degrees, reinsert it back into the jig, and now I'm going to start to cut the interior portion of this joint. So the first thing I'm going to do is to cut the shoulder, which is 5 eighths of an inch deep, and I'm going to come down again in quarter inch increments with the pocketing operation. I'm just going to remove material nice and slowly all the way till I get down to five, five eighths of an inch. Now for the interior single mortise, that's another five eighths of an inch down. So I'm going to take my time and pocket that out, remove all of the material with an inside cut. And in the end, I should have something that looks like this. It's essentially a three-stage mortise. And then if all is well and right with the world, you should get a crisp, clean fit like this. It's gonna take some practice, but you'll get there. Now on to shaping the legs in a different manner. Uh, I wanted to add some curvature to this table, just a little bit of subtle line to the leg to give it some zhuzh, you know, bring it up a little bit. 
And so I cut this template out at the bandsaw just to then take it to the bench and clean it up with some hand tools to make sure it has a little bit of subtle curvature to it. I'm gonna rough this out with a pencil onto my legs that all have the joinery done. And then I can take it to the bandsaw and I can remove the bulk of the waste. I'm gonna stay outside my line about a 16th of an inch, a little bit less if I can get close to it and just remove all of that waste. And then I can take it to the router table. Now you're gonna need a big bit for this. I'm telling you right now, you're gonna need a tall bearing bit. But if you get one, then I can use the template to route this curve clean. And you can get a really nicely shaped leg. I'm going to do both sides with the template on the outside of the leg, on the flat side of the leg both times. Then I'm gonna remove the template. That's gonna buy me a half inch and I'm gonna clean up that last little bit that the router bit couldn't reach. And boom, I got a beautiful little leg. Now it's time to just do some detail work. Again, touch up the heiress, uh, make sure that you're paying attention to all of the details around the joint because this is really the visual focal point of this table. Do a little bit of surface work. I'm going to do all of my surface prep before I do the half lap that connects the aprons because once you remove material, you're going to loosen up that half lap and that's a really key component to the strength of this table. If that half lap is loose, you're gonna have a wobbly table. Adding some light curvature to the aprons. Again, just to match the curvature of the leg. Now I'm treating the ends of those tenons in order to give them a little bit of flair as they are poking through the outside of the leg. And the glue up on this, honestly, was really quite simple because you're gluing up one leg at a time. There's nothing connecting each leg, making it imperative that it all gets glued up simultaneously. So gluing up one joint at a time, making some clamping calls that span over the protruding tenons, being able to clamp that together. It was a pretty simple glue up. Then once you get all four glued up, you can go ahead and glue up the half lap. Just drop a little glue in there, spread it around and throw a clamp on it. Let it dry for a couple hours. Again, all of this gluing up is done in stages and all of it was very easy comparatively. And once that's dry, it's just cutting a tabletop to fit. Now I wanted this tabletop to just overhang the exterior of the leg by about a quarter of an inch in any direction so that when I put an edge profile on this table, it just swoops right in to almost kissing the exterior of the corner there. Break out the old hand planes, give it a little bit of hand touch. And then check the visuals. And frankly, I really like the way this table came out. I think it's a really, really pleasant little object. So there it is, friends. A third and phenomenal project to end this series in collaboration with Shaper Origin. I mean, I don't know what else to say. The, the run of these projects will take you from absolute novice to intermediate woodworker and then going through the second set of projects, doing the more advanced versions of each of those will take you from intermediate to advanced woodworker, all in the span of six projects. So I'm thrilled with the content we have. I hope that you guys find that it's really, really useful for you, uh, whether you're a teacher or just a hobbyist woodworker in your own shop space, whatever it is, as long as you enjoy making the thing and you continue to, to work with wood, that's all I care about. So. Go out there, have fun, make a thing. Again, take aesthetic risks, make a design decision that's different from my own as with the first two projects and just be joyful in the fact that we get to create things in this life. It's a beautiful thing. So as always, be good, make good decisions and I will talk to y'all on the flip.
peace.